Thanks for being here today. Okay, so I wanted to look at a couple things today to show you um, how I'm able to use uh, Easy Drummer from ToonTrack and share the MIDI files with uh, other MIDI programs. And today I'm going to just show you a couple programs that I use uh, Easy Drummer 2 and Steven Slate Drums 5. So uh, for anyone who has those programs, maybe this video will help you share those MIDI libraries back and forth because sometimes uh, you can buy a whole bunch of different MIDI packs from ToonTrack and maybe you like the sounds coming out of Steven Slate 5. So you want to use the drum kit from there, but you want to use the MIDI packs and the beats that you're buying from ToonTrack. So this video will help you do that. So if uh, that helps you, please hit the like button below uh, also, if you want to see other videos for mobile recording, home studio recording, hit the subscribe link and the notification bell, and you'll be notified as soon as we have new videos coming out. So, without further ado, let's jump in. All right, so welcome back. So what we're going to have a look at, like I mentioned, was sharing MIDI libraries across from Easy Drummer 2 from ToonTrack and SSD 5, Steven Slate Drums 5. It's actually super easy to do. You'll probably be surprised that you can actually do this, but uh, I'm just going to walk you through it anyway. Uh, I am using Studio One version 4.6 uh, for my DAW. Uh, the principles are pretty much the same across different DAWs though. Once you have your track, your, in, your virtual track added, and you've opened up uh, Easy Drummer 2 instance and or SSD5 and you, whatever DAW you're using, the uh, same thing's gonna work. So it doesn't matter what DAW you're using, uh, this will work across any of those platforms. So uh, I guess the first thing you wanna do is just add a track into your uh, DAW and then make sure that you've selected uh, Easy Drummer 2 as the uh, instrument for that track um, in Studio One, you just hit T to add a track and it'll ask you if you want to use an insert an audio track or an instrument track. In this case, you want to select instrument and then you can select a uh, new instrument and in your drop down list, hit Easy Drummer. OK, uh, and then you can do another one by hitting T again, adding a second track, but we'll get into that later. And then the other thing that I want to do when I'm working with uh, any recording of virtual instruments or working with vir virtual instruments at all is I check my audio device settings in my options. Uh, in other DAWs, it'd be in preferences or whatever have you, but you'll know where that area is. In Studio One, you check your audio device processing, okay? So what I do when I'm doing virtual instruments is I set my buffer size fairly low, okay, the block size, of the device, but my dropout protection I set to maximum. Why do I do that? I do that because I wanna be able to enable low latency monitoring for instruments. See, if I click minimum dropout, I lose that ability. Now, sure, you might not have any latency, but your uh, processor is gonna be working really hard. If I go to maximum, I get low latency monitoring. Might even get it on high. Yeah, high. Medium, still have it, low, no more. So medium to maximum. I just put it on maximum. So what happens is it enables virtual instruments to be able to send MIDI signals in an almost uh, no latency situation, okay? So uh, what that's gonna do is it's gonna help you monitor what you're doing if you're gonna record things to a click track or try to sync different MIDI instruments up in the window, okay? So that's the thing, the other thing you wanna check out. So now that we've got that set, you see this green Z on the side here, okay? That's your low latency monitoring for instruments, okay? MIDI tracks here, I'm just gonna pull a few in. And you can do that by just clicking and dragging and dropping it down. Now I'll just drag across all of them and I'll Pull them in. You can just drag them right across into the MIDI track itself. Okay. So here's what it sounds like. Okay. Cool. 
So I've got drums, I've got everything working, I've got my mix panel here. Now the other thing that you want to do too is make sure that down below you have follow host. Okay, if you don't have follow host, it's not going to follow the tempo of your song in Studio One. Okay, it's going to follow whatever tempo it might have programmed. So those samples I pulled in were 155, 135, and 120 beats per minute. My song is at 130. So I want Easy Drummer to follow the tempo that I've laid out in my song. Also, when you stop and start the song within the DAW, it will also stop and start the drums being played in the drum program itself. Otherwise, this will keep playing or it'll play over top of this and then you get really loud volume. Now let's say you don't like the sounds of the Easy Drummer. Let's say you have Steven Slate Drums 5. What you can do there is grab another track. Let's call it Drums 2. We'll color it blue so we can differentiate. Input, I'll take any input. I'm going to grab Steven Slate Drums, that's a SSD5, and hit OK. OK, so now it's going to add that. If you want really low latency for recording these instruments, all you have to do on your main track is click this green Z. And it takes that low latency monitoring into effect, and that way you're able to record virtual instruments with almost no latency at all. So if you're recording to a click track, it makes things way easier for you. You can open up your SSD5, and same type of principle is going to apply here. Mapping, you can select that, you can load a preset, and you can say, I'm taking mapping from my DT Explorer, or you can say, I want you to, since we've already mapped our Yamaha drums to Easy Drummer, and Easy Drummer has converted it, you can take Easy Drummer mapping and import it into uh, Steven Slate 5. So I'll select Easy Drummer. Okay, so it's changed the MIDI mapping for us. And I've got a kit. Okay, now same principle applies here with Steven Slate drums. You can buy tons of different MIDI packs from TuneTrack, okay? Maybe the MIDI packs are really good or you find a groove in one of the Easy Drummer MIDI packs that you want to use in a Steven Slate drum kit because some of the Slate drum kits sound phenomenal. So what you can do is just take the MIDI out of the MIDI packs from Easy Drummer and dump them into SSD5. And it's super easy to do that. So what you can do, again, go to the mixer and you'll notice at the bottom here, it says out stereo one, out stereo two. So you can select all the different outputs. So you can just change them. Same reasoning as what you did in TuneTrack Easy Drummer is you changed the outputs to multi-track. And in SSD5, you can essentially do the same thing. Going back to Easy Drummer, again, you can take the MIDI that you've pulled out of Easy Drummer and just highlight it and pull it and drag it right on top of the track where you have SSD5. And you've taken MIDI out of Easy Drummer and put it into SSD5. But since you already have the mapping selected and you've selected Easy Drummer 2 mapping, it's going to take all the MIDI mapping and translate it so that it hits the right kits and the right drums in SSD5. Okay, so I'll mute the Easy Drummer. And if we hit play, You see, we can take the MIDI out of Easy Drummer and dump it right into SSD5 because Steven Slate was smart enough to know that you're probably going to want to do something like that. So he put an Easy Drummer 2 MIDI map in that translates everything for you. Love that guy. Anyway, so that's how you can do those things. Uh, super easy to do. Hopefully this video was helpful to you in any way. Uh, if it was, please hit the like button at the bottom and hit the subscribe and the notification bell if you want to see uh, more videos related to home recording or related to uh, mobile recording. Uh, any questions regarding Easy Drummer 2 and Studio One, uh, leave them in the comment section below. If you've got a different way of being able to do these things, I'm always willing to learn as well. So if you've got a faster way, please leave it in the comments below. 
and uh, I'd love to be able to learn more about that too. So anyway, thanks for being here. Keep making music.